Hi there everyone, it's Michael Beresford here from OpenCorp uh, along with Matt Lewison, OpenCorp Group CEO for the next edition of Property Investing Insider. Great to see you Matt, thanks for joining us. Uh, look, as we know, as experienced long-term property investors, there are abundant benefits to, um, to owning new property, but uh, with the, um, the, the, the well-publicized builder insolvencies lately, uh, the inflationary costs of materials and the, the supply chain constraints since since COVID. Obviously, there are a lot of questions around, well, you know, what are the risks of building new? Does it still make sense? Um, you know, and uh, and really, is it worth the risk uh, of, uh, of building new to have a new investment? A um, few key things to unpack as part of that. Uh, what are the main ones to be, to be considering? All right, first of all, I think it's really important people understand that being a successful property investor doesn't come down to one thing. There, there's no one magic bullet that makes you successful or makes a property purchase um, a winner. You actually have to do a number of one percenters and the more of those one percenters that you can do, the more you're stacking the odds of success in your favor. Um, and that comes down to obviously buying well, buying in the right location. Um, it's making sure you're buying the right type of property where you've got obviously the fundamentals that are working for you. Um, but one of the big things, in fact, there's multiple things that come into this, is making sure that you're getting the most advantage from your property out of the tax incentives that are on offer. Now, to put this kind of in some context, the, the Australian government structures the tax system in a way that encourages people to do the things that the government wants you to do. That's the whole, re whole reason to have an incentive, right? Or a tax deduction is an incentive. It's tax deductible, it means the government wants you to do it. They want you to spend your money on that thing and then you get a tax deduction. For instance, over the last couple of years, businesses were able to write off the value of assets that were purchased up to 150,000. Um, and a lot of businesses were using this to buy, buy brand new cars or buy equipment so that they could write that off. And the government wanted businesses to do that because they wanted to spark activity in the economy to grow their way out of the COVID lockdowns and inflate the economy again. Uh, worked a little bit too well, <laughs> clearly. Yeah, um, but that's the way an incentive works. And they take it away. Uh, in that case, that was a short term. They said it was short term. There was an end date. So kind of business that didn't assume it was going to be there forever. Um, with property, there are a number of incentives that have been around for a really long time. And they're going to be here to stay because every time the government has even talked about maybe tweaking them or whatnot, there's a huge backlash. And they also, every time they talk about it, it has unintended consequences because every time government, whether it's federal or state, fiddles with the property market, it actually makes things worse because it causes people to stop, stop building. Um, and if it stops building, then the housing supply issue gets worse. So what do they want us to do? They want us to build more houses because Australia's population is growing really, really quickly. In fact, in the last year, at a record pace of about half a million people, but it's been growing up very quickly relative to other advanced economies for the last 50 years. Um, and so we need to continue to build more houses. And so the government, in their infinite wisdom, many, many years ago, created an incentive to encourage people, investors, to build new houses for rental occupation. And they said, if you build a new house, then we'll let you deduct the cost of building that house from your tax over the life of that asset. And they determined the life of the asset, the home, was 40 years. But they also said that some of the parts of that asset, light fittings, taps, all those sorts of things that um, you might replace more often, you can depreciate over a much shorter window of time. So in the first few years, you actually get a much bigger tax benefit. Now, as the cost of building a house goes up, so too does the tax benefits you get from having a new house. In fact, if you build a new house today and the cost of a typical investment property can be around 400,000, um, depending on where you are in Australia. So that's 400,000 in tax deductions you get over the life of that asset. If you're on the top tax bracket, it's $180,000 the government's going to give you in tax to have built a new house. Now, just to be clear, that, that's not a discount on the purchase price or it's not equity in the property, it's cold hard cash flow over that amount of time to assist with Absolutely. holding that property. And in the first five years, it's about $67,000 in extra cash flow. So if you're looking at an established house and a brand new house that you have to build, um, the established house, you're gonna get very, very little tax deductions because the cost base of that house could have already been written off by the previous owner. 
certainly off a much lower construction cost. But you're going to get $67,000 back in the first five years that's going to provide cash flow to help you fund your second property or to improve, obviously, what you take home, uh, as well as getting better rents. And we're seeing that right now, that newer properties are absolutely renting at a premium over older um, properties. You've got lower um, maintenance costs and lower improvement costs that you have over time. You've got less risk of something with breaking. Um, and when things break, they're often not insured. Uh, insurance companies don't cover you for just things that break from wear and tear. Um, so there's a whole heap of advantages around owning that new, building a new property, particularly that tax advantage. And again, it's, it's not a 1%, that's probably a 5% that's stacking the odds in your favor. 67,000 in five years and 180,000 over the life of that investment. I mean, that's a huge advantage that you have over the guy next door that bought an established house where they got almost no tax benefits. Um, so then it comes down to, is it really too risky? Um, and this is the thing that really scares the hell out of people. Um, but I, I remember there was a, uh, there's a book called Freakonomics uh, that really looks at human behavior. And one of the things that they, they talked about, um, I believe in the book, was that after um, the, uh, the 9 11, September 11, 9 11 attack on the US um, and the World Trade Center, the number of people who were flying, who would actually buy a ticket to fly in an airplane for the next year dropped by like 70%. People were very, in America, were spooked about flying in a plane because of that big event. But the security around the airports like quadrupled after that event, the chances of a terrorist attack on a plane went down a lot. But the number of people who died on the roads over the next year tripled over the typical um, death toll for roads in America. And it's one of those things that when there's something big and scary, we all kind of react and we want to avoid that, that risk. But the reality is that once that big scary thing has happened, the system actually starts to adjust and de-risk that scenario. So it's the things that we're not aware of that are the, the ones in life that are actually the biggest risk. Once you're aware of something, you've seen it happen, it starts, you can de-risk it and it starts to become a lower risk. Yeah. And what we've seen now is that housing costs are going up at a much slower pace than they were. Obviously we had that inflationary period and that's really started to ease. We're seeing build times coming down and we're seeing a 33% reduction in the time frame to build each stage of a house just in the last six months alone. So that's coming down really quickly and it's starting to normalize. It's still not quite normal, but it's improving a lot. So the risks in the construction industry are actually leaving the system. And we're also seeing fewer housing starts because obviously as interest rates have gone up and as people have become scared of building new, fewer people are actually signing a contract to build a new house and they're competing for the established houses. And obviously, hence the reason why you can start to get a premium now if you sign a contract to build a house. Once it's finished, if five houses were built in the street, three of them might sell to owner occupiers who weren't prepared to sign a building contract they'll pay that convenience premium to buy an established house that's brand new and that obviously helps with the valuation for those people who have built new you get to capture some upside and we saw this 10 years ago and we're seeing it again now that convenience premiums making a really positive impact for investors that are buying in those areas where people the first home buyers are desperate to get out of that rental market so that's another advantage of building new that's not always the case but absolutely right now we're seeing that more and more um, so in terms of, is it too risky to bother to get the benefits? I'd say it's a lot less risky today than it was a year or two years ago. And we're absolutely comfortable with the risks in that market at the moment. We obviously provide a lot of guarantees um, to our clients as well about fixed price building guarantee and fixed time frame. Um, and I'm pleased to say not a single one of our clients has paid an extra cent to have their home completed in the last three years, despite the fact that costs for building a house have gone up by as much as 50%. Our clients have never been asked to pay another cent to have their home finished. Um, so again, maybe there's parts of the country where that's not the case or building on your own might have some additional risk, but certainly for our clients, they get the benefit of that convenience premium for having built new. They're getting all of the tax benefits and they're getting protected from the risk um, of, uh, of cost increases. And we're obviously working with builders that have rock solid um, balance sheets and we do a lot of work to understand their financials with a direct line to their CFO from our CFO. And we're always engaging with them to make sure that they're healthy and that they're working 
um, productively so our clients have a, a smooth process. Yeah, awesome. Um, obviously the builder risk management piece is, uh, is so critical um, as you've talked about and the, I guess the relationships and the buying power that we've got can, can get people a much better outcome than if they're flying solo. Trying to, uh, trying to get that information from a builder. The one other thing I'd add on, uh, I think you gave us A to Y, if I just add Z for a, uh, for a full list. Um, remember that, uh, especially in a rental crisis, there's so much demand uh, for rent and, or for rentals, and people like to live in a new house. So not only can we, can we maximise the tax benefits, specifically through the depreciation, as, uh, as you talked about, but we can also be getting a premium for a new house in terms of rent. So, uh, don't make property, I think the takeaway message, don't make property investment about the property. Successful property investment, as Matt said, is, is a, uh, an accumulation of these one percenters. Um, one of the big one percenters is understanding the, the overall portfolio performance that you can achieve. And if you can maximise the rental income that comes in from the tenant, and you can maximise the tax benefits that minimises your holding costs, then the numbers show that you can hold three new properties for the same amount of money out of your pocket as one established property. So let's say they were that same price, 700,000 working for you over here versus $2.1 million in asset value working for you in the new scenario. Give yourself 10 years, the numbers and the difference is, uh, is significant. Give yourself 15 years plus, it's astronomical. Uh, so a fair bit of detail there today, but hopefully that's helped you understand uh, a bit more about the, uh, the nature of the building environment, the government motivations around the tax benefits, how you can take advantage of it in property investing inside of from OpenCorp. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us.